It's lovely to be here in Sydney. I've only been here once before. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, it's an extremely extraordinary city. You should be very, very proud of it. Uh, Simon uh, and I were just chatting away, and he was saying, no, you're a leading Irish economist. We were chatting about that. And then about half an hour ago, we went around to get a coffee uh, because of a wee bit jet lagged. And he saw what happens to a leading Irish economist when he puts his credit card in an ATM machine. It got rejected. <laughs> so there's a significant reflection on our credit rating as a society and the rating of economists in our society. <laughs> but no, I, I want to talk this evening uh, about two or three big trends that I see in the world economy. The first thing I want to talk about is what I call the Malthusian moment. Now, the Malthusian moment is when... The population of the world gets too big and it cannot support itself food-wise. Now this is something that we don't really hear about because Malthus, of course, was an English economist, 19th century dude. He said that what's going to happen is we're going to have far too many people, we'll run out of food and we'll have famine and pestilence. And what actually happened? The opposite. But that's not to say he was wrong all the time. So I want to talk a wee bit about this Malthusian moment. And the other thing I want to make or reinforce is the idea that food abundance is relatively new and food security is an absolutely crucial part of humanity. Ever since a dude called Joseph rocked up in Egypt and had a word in the Pharaoh's shell and said, if I were you, I'd put some of that corn that you've just harvested into a warehouse because your seven years of plenty may well be followed by seven years of famine, food security has always been part of human behavior. I mean, for example, how many people here's mother, like my mother, spent all her time saying to me as a child, eat up everything on the plate. Why? Because she had, and I'm sure loads of people's mothers here were the same, because she had a memory of scarcity. She had a memory of a time when food wasn't available. And that is not that long ago. So for example, if you go to certain parts of China, when they say, hello, how are you? They don't say, hello, how are you to each other? They say, hello, have you eaten? Why? Because of, again, the memory of famine. So all these things are reasonably recent in human history. Now, economists don't like talking about this stuff because they're prepared to talk about GDP and inflation, etc. But what actually binds everything together is the umbilical cord of the global food supply. And I think I want to reinforce this again and again this evening. Now, the other thing about economists is they tend to be dry. They tend, I always believed, to use jargon and language that people can't understand in order to elevate themselves from the rest of you. A wee bit like priests used to do years ago, speak in Latin to the congregation. And in order to actually combat that, uh, we in Dublin have come up with this notion of punk economics. It comes from our appreciation of punk rock, uh, which, again, when I was a child, I was terrorised by the tyranny of my older sister's brutal record collection, Steely Dan in particular, which as a young fella is a brutal thing, and then emerging out of nowhere became the Sex Pistols, which changed our world. And I think economics has become similarly overblown and a wee bit like Steely Dan and Emerson, Lake and Palmer. So the idea here now is to rip economics away from self-indulgence and to look at it in a different way. And so we've brought over from Ireland uh, a little animation uh, in order to help us do this, so play it away there. Run, ever run, ever run, ever run, 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 run for your left, the boy carries a gun. Who went chick chick boom? Who went chick chick boom? Who went chick chick boom? What have the following Aussies all got in common? Ned Kelly, Kevin Rudd, Paul Keating, Peter Carey, Kylie Minogue, Errol Flynn, Russell Crowe, Jason Donovan, Tom Kennelly, Susie O'Neill, James O'Connor and Paul Hogan. The hint is in their names. What binds them together is food, or rather the lack of it. 
These Irish Australians are the result of a terrifying Malthusian warning to the world, the Great Irish Famine. There can be fewer, more vicious ecological examples of what happens when a population gets too big to support itself than what happened to my own country years and years ago. This experience killed millions and scattered the Irish tribe all over the world, many of whom are in the audience tonight. Quite apart from destroying your good-looking genes, keeping you up at night and generally lowering the tone of your neighbourhood, the Great Irish Exodus tells us what happens when hungry people panic. They move to better parts of the world en masse. And this could be the story of the entire globe in the next 50 years. Unless we solve the issue of food security, the world is facing a Malthusian nightmare on a catastrophic scale. As the rock of the insatiable demand of 7 billion, soon to be 10 billion people, smashes into the hard place of the planet's limited resources to produce that one thing which keeps us all alive, food. And when you drill down, the food dilemma is actually a bigger dilemma. It is an energy problem, and one which is not going away. So that's the downside. The upside is that Malthus's central 19th century prediction that too many people would eventually run out of food has rarely occurred anywhere at any time. We have been a sufficiently ingenious animal in most cases, and when faced with existential challenges, humanity has come up with the technology to increase yields, increase farming productivity, increase supply, and avoid catastrophe. In fact, so successful has this been that the problem for many parts of the rich world is not too little food, but too much food. It's not too many skinny people, but too many fat people. And it's not a medical system which is combating the challenges of malnutrition, but one that is struggling with the challenges of obesity. So let's stand back and look at the big picture. 